do. I think we have a couple um, members on our car show committee that are passionate about the British cars and very sensitive to that. So they, um, they really looked at that to divide it up. Well, we'll still have it next year. So bring two cars next year. <laughs> no, I hope it doesn't rain. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Your vehicle? Awesome. Good job. And it's 2002 Dodge Ram 1500 4x4. It's got almost 50,000 miles on it. Okay. And um, it's been customized as far as having a dual exhaust put on with uh, Fullmaster and Gibson tip. Got a 4.7 engine. Um, and like I said, I take the 22s off and I put the 18s back on for winter use. So it's okay. used all, all year long. Yep. I like your little stool where you can get up and do all that cleaning they there. When I come to these shows, they say, well, what are you doing? You know, how come you polish your car? Because it's never in a garage, so I have to get to the shows. And if it's been raining the night before or this morning, it was messy. Wow, so that's a bit of work after being rained out yesterday. So it had some heavy rains yesterday. We did. We did. So I had to, uh, people make fun of me. I say, hey, you know, you can make fun of me all you want, but she looks good and she's never been in a garage. Yeah, the wheels look awesome there. Good. A lot, of, a lot of hard work and dedication. That's my new kitchen. <laughs> All the money I put into this truck, I could have had a new kitchen. You hear that? <laughs> so, anyway. Thank you for supporting our show. Yes, yes. I'm Suzanne with the Dairy Village Rotary president like, this year. One of the things that I really enjoy about having this as a hobby is that usually it's for a very good cause or to help somebody else. Yes. And that's what I like about it. Um, the money goes to some organization or to a local you know, food pantry or something along those lines. So that's what I really love about this hobby. Great. And, it's, and it helps other people, and that's why I do it. Well, we appreciate it. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Common cause. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> I have here with me Scooter. Scooter. Nice to meet you, Scooter. And Jason. Jason. They have some unique vehicles, something that most people would probably throw or, or keep in a junk pile. Some really cool-looking vehicles that probably um, some of the dusty old cars could help them with. Do you want to tell us a little bit about your vehicle here? You got, wait, wait a minute, I see a cigarette <laughs> down here. Is this your holder, unique holder? I was trying to not do that on camera. <laughs> oh, here I, I brought attention to it too. Sorry about that. <laughs> Uh-oh, <laughs> got you in trouble. All right, tell us a little bit about your vehicle. Uh, it's a 34 Dodge. Uh, it's got a 350 Rocket Oldsmobile motor in it. And whatever you can find to make it fit, it fit. The chairs are uh, kitchen table chairs. They cut the legs off them. There's a toilet seat in the back to fill up the gas. Hubcap air cleaner. They got the old Uga horn. That's pretty much it. You can't go wrong on it. It's original paint from 1934, never been touched. It looks like it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you've used some household items to be able to travel. Can't do it wrong. Anything you can get on there works. It's got uh, porcelain doorknobs on the outside from a house to open up the doors. You just go with it. Whatever you can find, stick it on there and make it work. So where did you originally find just the, um, the running motor and... I actually bought it off a guy up in New Hampshire. He had most of it done. It had different rims and tires and uh, over the past year I've done some work to it, but... Do I dare ask you what you spent on it? Uh, it's priceless. Priceless. That's a good answer. I don't know what I would do if my husband came home with a vehicle like that <laughs> and said, forget the kitchen, honey. I need the chairs for my seats. Good job. Pretty cool. <laughs> All right, you want to tell us a little bit about your vehicle here? It's a 67 Ford F100, uh, original paint, 302 motor, uh, with just some new aftermarket rims. That's about it. It's pretty plain. Do you actually use it for hauling anything? I brought my bike in it today. My bike's in the show, and my bike was in the back. Yeah, I ride it every day. You drive this vehicle every day? Since I've only owned it a couple weeks, but yes. Very cool. So do you have any plans to restore it? No. Staying just the way it is. Staying just the way it is. Some classic vehicles. Yeah. Well, thank you guys thank for you. supporting our show. I hope you'll come next year. I would be real curious to see if you've made any additions to... Well, pretty much the same. Maybe a little more rust, a little more patina. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I like the dice there on the hubcap and some of those little flares. Adds a lot of personality. Yeah. Thank you again. Thank you. <laughs> Very cool guys, I think those vehicles could run. <laughs> Very cool. We'll see.
Someone can do their vehicle. I have here with me Chris. Phil. Phil. Okay, Phil. Sorry no, about that. Right. <laughs> um, Phil has, it looks like a Chevy Nova. Am I right? 67. 67. Chevy Camaro. Chevy Camaro. Okay, that shows you what I know about cars. <laughs> He's going to tell us a little bit about his vehicle. Uh, 67 Camaro, 350 small block, uh, pushing about 500 horsepower to the real wheels. Wow. So, yeah, it does, it's fun. It's a fun so car. So where, where do you go that fast? Uh, on ramps. On ramps. <laughs> Try to take off there. It's not many places. But Are you looking to propel yourself off the on ramps? or uh, As fast as I can get it going, I guess. <laughs> Have a little fun try to be quiet about it but it's pretty loud I, I was gonna say it doesn't look like it would be a quiet no, car not at all and it's not hard to miss so it can get me into some trouble but how long have you had the car uh, about five years now so and have you had to put a lot of work into it yeah we've done small things here and there we've got it pretty much like this and we've gas lines um, headers small things like that so to the motor but that's fun and what's the story with Tigger in the back Ah, uh, for the women. No, little kid, little kids enjoy it, so it's fun. But all right, he's got a tigger in the back seat there, for the little kids yeah. and the girls. Some, some girls. No, it got me out of a ticket once actually. It did. Yes, lady cop was very nice. She pulled me over. She said she loves Tigger, and she let me go. So. Awesome. All right, we won't reveal her identity yeah. or what town she's in. <laughs> well, thank you. So yeah, thank for you. Supporting our show. Yeah, it's awesome. Great turnout. Well, uh, Appreciate you guys. Have them us. take a closer look at your vehicle. Excellent. Thank you. No, doesn't a Nova kind of look like a Camaro, or am I like way off base? Like you need to make sure he edits that, right? <laughs> yeah, Nova's a little bit, uh, it's not as sleek. It isn't. A See, I'm just trying to figure like yeah. the cars that my brother owned when I was, you know, yeah. teenager. Yeah, the body style's just a little different. Is it? Yeah. I think on the Nova, the lights are turned up, aren't they? Oh. So my husband handed him the title. So it was already finished. Yes. My husband, uh, he owns a used car lot. And somebody, he took it in trade. Somebody traded it. So. Wow. So I'd like to interview you with your car. All right. I have Keegan here with me. And I understand he's only 14 years old. So he's probably our youngest entrant in the show. He has a beautiful truck here. He's going to tell us a little bit about. This is my 1966 Chevy C10 pickup. And we call it pumpkin. You call it pumpkin. I don't have to ask you why you call it pumpkin. <laughs> but how, um, how did you come to, are you actually the owner of this car? Yes, my dad gave it to me last year. So you don't even have your license yet. No. But you have a beautiful truck. When you get your license, do you plan on driving this around town? When I get strong enough, I will. What do you mean strong enough? It's got no power steering. No power steering. Okay, I would have no idea about that. Okay, so are you in the process of starting to lift some weights, pump some iron, so you'll be able to? Probably. <laughs> That's great. It's a beautiful vehicle. Very, very nice. And you're very fortunate that your dad was willing to give you such a beautiful truck. You'll be a very responsible driver. Yes, I will. Great. What town do you live in? I live right here in Derry. In Derry. Great. I'll be on the lookout for it. Thank you for supporting our show, Keegan. Thank you very much. And your sister? Jordan. Jordan. I'm glad you came to our show. Are you enjoying all the cars that you've seen today? Yeah. Let me ask you one question. What car are you going to vote for best in show? I really haven't looked around yet, so I don't really know it. You're not going to automatically just put your brother's name in? No. There we go. Unbiased vote today. Thank you. <laughs> And next year, actually, are you going to do the automotive department, do you yeah. think? Yeah, I think so. Because um, we're hoping to join up with the automotive department to um, help them, have them help us with our car show next year. And we also are um, 
my Rotary Club sponsors your freshman class. Oh, really? So we have like a Frost Festival um, spaghetti dinner for the seniors in February that you can come help and get community service hours. Oh, you can help us at the show next year to get some community service hours. Yeah, this is we, my second year entry. Oh, good. With the same vehicle? Okay. Yeah. Oh, good. That was for two years. My dad owns car dealership in Derry. Oh, does he? Okay. Yeah. And then uh, he got this from South Carolina. So wow. And then we did some work to it. We did some engine. And we did some other work to it. And, uh, so together you've kind of rebuilt it and made it look brand new. It came mostly like this, but yeah, like the engine wasn't our strongest. We did some work to the transmission. and It's pretty much perfect. Nice. Nice. I can see that three years from now being used for your junior prom. Is that <laughs> my uncle's 59 vet. Oh, gee. So what car dealership? He owns uh, Chris Nackers Auto Sales. Where is that? It's uh, 44 Manchester Road by the old Walmart. Okay. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Great. Well, again, thank you for coming, Keegan and Jordan. Thank you. And your other sister back there who's being shy. <laughs> All right. We'll see you next year. And if you want to do any um, community service hours, our Rotary Club does. Uh, will support your club okay. or your class next year. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thanks. <laughs> want to talk about your car a little bit, or you want to eat? <laughs> we'll come back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Who wants to eat first? We can. We can interview you about how good the food is. <laughs> he said he will, but he'd like to eat first. Thanks. Hi, this is Suzanne. I'm here with Brian Duffin with his Dodge Viper. And he's going to talk a little bit about the car. It's a 1998 Dodge Viper GTS. It's a coupe version. It uh, has a V10 engine, 488 cubes, uh, 8 liters. Uh, and when it was new uh, in 1998, it made about 450 horsepower, which back then was pretty darn good. Um, What's been done to it since then, uh, not, not all by me, uh, one of the previous owners did a lot of work on it. Um, he added a twin turbo system um, done by Jason Hefner uh, down in Clearwater, Florida. Um, he put custom rims on it. Uh, the, wind, the wing is actually functional. At 150 miles an hour, it's pushing down with 1,000 pounds of force to keep the car on the ground. Um, the turbo system is something that you on a computer and a dyno, you tune it to what you want. So they have done some, some racing tuning with it. On 100 octane gas, and normally in a pump, you get 93 is the best you can get. Um, they popped the seat out, they put slicks on the back, um, they retuned it, so it was probably making around 1,000, a little over 1,000 horse, and they drag raced it. And uh, they did 149 miles an hour, 9.7 seconds which is really good wow. for a heavy car like this wow. in a stick shift. He, uh, and they've done some testing. Um, Jason did some road, uh, airport testing with it, and it'll do, as he said, well over 200 miles an hour uh, without trying. It can make up to 1,300 horsepower. To make it streetable, it's been turned down so it's only eight pounds of boost so that I can run 93 octane pump gas and it's dynoed at 740 horsepower at the rear wheels, 725 pound-feet of torque. Um, that's enormous. <laughs> you can't buy a production car anywhere, uh, high-end Corvette, anything uh, in this country, or even mostly on this planet, that has that much horsepower at the rear wheels. Ferraris have around 600, 650, uh, Maseratis, all the rest of them. So this thing has been set up with a lot of horsepower, a lot of speed. So what use is all that horsepower and speed? Like, where, when do you get to use it? Okay, uh, 
Is this going to go so the cops can see it? <laughs> I don't know. I can only tell you this. Um, don't, don't give away any towns. Details, no nothing. But I've taken it over 150, um, solid as a rock. I mean, the car was just made to go fast. And a thrill and a rush like no other. Just did it once, um, just to get a feel for what it was like. How long ago was that? How long is that thrill lasting you? Uh, even to now, <laughs> to this moment, I, I have a vivid memory of going that fast. I had never gone that fast. Wow, and like you said, the wheels, everything. I mean, the car is very solid. It's the wheels are good for 186 miles an hour, so you can safely go that fast on them. They're, they're, they're the special high-speed wheels. The whole car was made to go real fast. It sounds like it's a fun car. How many speeding tickets do you have? Um, I've had zero so far. Wow. Okay. I mean, it's slow. It's small. And I mean, and it's not a bright color, so it's not standing out. But the speed that it has, I'm surprised that you haven't gotten. <laughs> well, it turns out, use a little common sense. You do it in certain places where friends can help you and keep an eye out, and you can just. Okay. Now that's starting to sound like a little, little illegal stuff going on. <laughs> it's pretty cool. It sounds like it's a really, really fast, fun car. Of all the cars I've ever owned in my life, and I've owned some pretty big horsepower cars, I thought, um, this makes them all pale by comparison. It's just such a fun car to drive. In six gear, it's doing 1,750 RPM, just barely turning, and it's doing 85 miles an hour. So I have to wow. in fifth gear. I have to down. Right. Wow. Do you drive this car every day? No. But, uh, I really just take it out for shows and cruise nights, and that's pretty much it. And just to maybe take it to the beach or something like that. And uh, it doesn't get. It probably gets maybe 1,500 to maybe 2,000 miles a year. So it's. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's all right. I think I would want to keep it for a long time. That's my plan. That is my plan. Uh, and and all I can say is, uh, American made. This one, it's handmade, not an assembly line. And uh, Dodge Rocks, although. They're owned by Fiat now and okay. whatever. That's all changed, but yeah. wonderful yeah. car. Great, great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for Pleasure. supporting our show. Appreciate it. <laughs> Sounds like it's awesome. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, I want to go for a ride. Uh, well, I'll add you to the list. The list oh, is no. <laughs> yeah. Every one of my neighbors, everybody I run into, I always want to jump in and say, just take me for a ride. All I can offer you is maybe a first place trophy. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> yeah, sounds like it's a lot of fun. It is, Boy, it is. is it fast, huh? It really is fast, and, it's, uh, and it yeah. really goes like you wouldn't believe. It's yeah, just, uh, yeah. It was a nice styling. Uh, when the hood down, it just has a beautiful look to it. Just, yeah, uh, yeah. I like the look, the sleek. Are all the um, Vipers made by hand, not they are, assembly they are line? Custom made. They're all custom made. Yeah. Handmade and they all Vipers are they've okay. They've been them for 20 years and they've only made a little over 25,000 of them. So wow, that means they're barely making a little over a thousand a year. So, what kind of price range does a Viper go for when well, it's new? Back in 98, this one went for about 66,000. <laughs> okay, so it was white, yeah. 2013, they're, they're coming back with them. Yep, it's probably going to be around 120 to 130,000. Wow, so, so it's really an expensive high end, right? Car. Right. Yeah. Right. And they're made for, you know, those guys that are crazy and like to go fast. Well, not fast also. It just looks like it would handle really well. Oh, very responsive to very your... Very wide tires, you know, and the front end is very low. And it just uh, noses right into the curves wonderfully. It just mm -hmm. uh, handles. In fact, it's very hard. Um, it's easy to make the rear wheels spin out, but it's hard to get that front end off. It kind of wants to stay on the road. It's going right, to... right. I did do a little bit of uh, drifting with it. To get a feel what it would be like to mm -hmm. slide it and smoke the tires. Uh -huh. and, uh, uh, I did it in a big parking lot with no cars around. Yeah. And uh, what a thrill. I never had a car that would comfortably spin around. Wow. And smoke and all that. Just, right, uh, right, right. It's just uh, I cannot find anything wrong to say or anything, anything to complain about the car. Nice. It's so comfortable, all leather interior. It's just uh, it's, it shifts wonderfully. It's got a nice shift to it. Sounds like a joy. It is. <laughs> Great. Well, it's enjoy the day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Academy with the Dairy Village Rotary Club. This is our sixth annual.